So we're into the ninth year of the UK Front Wheel Drive Drag Series and why is this series so popular? Well, the younger generation have brought up with front wheel drive cars and that's why we love them. Your cars, your Vauxhall Corsa, your Honda Civics, your VW Golfs, we love them. But you want to turn them into race cars, don't you? Yes, you do. Dougie Jemmel here to turn his Honda Civic into a full-on nine-second race car. Well, we're starting off with a look at Saturday's test day. It's the first time out on track in 2018 for the Front Wheel Drive Drag Series, and some of our teams are putting in checkout passes before race day tomorrow. This is Dougie Gemmel in his TDI Northback Civic, the car's first time out on track in seven years. There's plenty to do to dial cars into the brand new track surface here at Santa Pod, but how did some of our teams start out? Never ever thought we'd be at this level, to be honest. We come with standard road cars and things, and that's what we started off with. It just sort of progressed from there. We came down one weekend, didn't we? And we entered a competition just to really come here. First ever outlaw competition it was. And uh, we entered that and did pretty well in it, like, to be honest. Ran a 10.5, the first ever time on slicks, and so. Never we just been away now. Got the bug from there, so. I've had this nine years, so, I mean, when I first came to Pods, nine years nothing new ten years ago it wasn't any up here it was one of the first ones up here within a couple of years they all started appearing so um i didn't plan on taking it to this extent i just just for a bit of fun really and then obviously it goes a little bit further and before you know it you've got a full out track car rather than a street car it's, it's getting now it's just time and progress with it really um We've got a lot of plan about it. It's on a different ECU system now, which first time today, I'm not too familiar with it. So to be honest with you, I'm struggling with getting it set up. But otherwise, as I say, it's just been a progress of, we've changed the body, we've gone with the carbon fiber now, um, taking a lot of weight out of the car. So yeah, it's just, today's really just, hopefully try and get it dialed in, and get it into the nines, hopefully. Bogged on the line, just the first test run. After the first gear, it was fine. It did what it, sh it should have done, but just initially the first gear was the problem we had with it. Um, like I say, we're gonna play with it now, hopefully try to figure the bug out with it and hopefully do a full pass in a little while. It's all development. It's, everything's, we just, we always work on the car. Yeah. Every weekend we're there, work, uh, working on both cars. We've gotta get both ready at the same time, so it's, and we race together, so it's, we know we need them right. We, we damaged the wing last year, we got that painted last minute. Uh, waiting for parts coming, getting stickers made for sponsors. Uh, Obviously with two cars as well, this one didn't have an this engine. This one didn't have an engine on like Tuesday, Wednesday. So. We were on the dyno Thursday night four with cars both cars. The dyno, so. uh, and then one didn't go well, one was all right. Uh, but we could only get so much done on the dyno as well because they sp spin quite bad front wheel drive cars. and. Uh, we don't, we don't get the traction, so then we go through test passes and, you know, and then then map send them off to our tuner. He gets back with another map, and then we just work from there. We can never just go out and do a full hit and, you know, hope for good results or personal best. Well, here is Keel late on Saturday afternoon, ready for that first gentle test pass of the 2018 season, and it sounds like a box full of neutrals for him. So, annoyingly, no data on this run. And possibly quite a bit of work for the team to find the problem. No gears at all. Nothing, so... Don't know yet, really. No, I just launched in first, but like I didn't launch, I just rolled off the line, really, just, to, just so I wasn't putting much pressure on the gearbox. But that didn't work. A large contingent of front wheel drive cars from the Netherlands were booked in for the day, testing for the upcoming Door Slammers event here at Santa Pod later in the season, and also chasing some new European records. It 
in the term of front wheel drive records in Europe, they are tumbling. We now have 19 cars in the eight second bracket and over 80 cars in the nine second bracket. A lot of them feature in our UK front wheel drive drag series. Earlier today, we saw Michael Holloman run an 899 and an 882 lifting at half track. There's so much more in that car. And this is that car, the yellow Minion Civic of Michael Holloman. Fresh from his first eight second pass earlier in the day. Yes, that was really fantastic, yeah. That's why we're here. You're testing for door slammers? We're testing the four door slammers on the moment, yes. And it, it got a lot more in it. When you say a lot more in it, are you talking about a few hundreds or tenths? No. I'm, I'm, I'd like to go 8-0, that's the plan. But not such good luck for Kiel Priestman after that run. Someone must be the world after us now. So moving on to race day proper and a very foggy Sunday morning. We're in the scrutineering area with Dougie Gemmel. The, the check and like the validation of that your race equipment, your race suits in date, your helmet's in date, everything's like that. You've got the correct five point harness in, um, that your roll cage is up to spec, things like that. They go through the whole car like that. Anyway, it's a brand new setup. It's the first time we've been at the track in seven years, so it's a, you know it's a, it's a very steep learning curve. But we got to about 11.7 yesterday. We were bogging a lot in every gear, so. We put a bit more boost in it and see how the first qualifier goes. So, as we move towards qualifying, a quick look at the official entry list for the round. Last minute preparations for drivers and crew, maps, parachutes, and maybe a final polish. And thankfully, it looks like Kiel Priestman has got the car back together. They just came over and asked if we'd repair, they'd broken a their linkage for their gearbox and uh, in dire straits they just asked if I'd do a repair. I was working with a customer yesterday so it's something I couldn't address straight away but we went back to the workshop uh, at the end of the day and um, yeah, we repaired it for them. Yeah, well we just did a, a, a light launch, uh, went for second and didn't get anything at all uh, and we tried all the gears, there was nothing at all. It was a weird, weird thing with the gearbox but uh, one of the selector that we get for them, uh, an upgraded one from America, it broke, so we, we don't have any spares like that, you know, so uh, we end up going to John Webster uh, and he's helped us out, uh, sorted it out and we got it all back in last night, we didn't get the bed till about 12, so. So here we go, into the first of three scheduled qualifying sessions here at the All Talk Test Day, and first out will be Dougie Gemmel in the Honda Civic Type R. And that should be Pete Cole in the left lane with his Renault, but he seems to be driving a rather standard looking Fiat R Bath. So remember, reaction times don't matter in qualifying, and with seven cars entered, everyone will qualify. Very different conditions to yesterday's sunshine, And it's down into the 11s now for Dougie. And Pete's in the field with the Fiat. And here is the newly repaired Civic of Kiel Priestman. Looking a little bit squirrely on the launch, but he's got gears now and he's not pushing too hard this time round. Goes through to a gentle 12.6 second time. Keel's teammate Luke Pritchard next out in the Grey Civic. Sounding strong in the first half of the track, but backing off the power before the stripe for a 13.49. Dan Frost in the right lane and Phil Reeves in the left lane in the Ford. Huge front tyres on Phil's car. Now the car has run nines before, 
but it looks to be a slower checkout pass for him. But what about that? A great first run for Dan Frost in the Fix Autos back Civic. 10.08, a number one spot at the moment. Ray Saunders up next in the RMS Jackwork Civic EG. He's already put in quite a few test runs yesterday. And putting in a solid 10 second time on this one. So I started doing uh, the first round last year, uh, so doing 16 second quarter miles. Um, and after a lot of hard work over the year, we got down to a nine. Um, and then this year, a lot of work over the winter, uh, sort of doing consistent nines and testing, uh, but not today, because that's just the way, the way it goes. <laughs> now, it's not a Honda Civic, so no. does that put you at a disadvantage? Uh, if it was going by numbers, then yes. But uh, so far, it it's, it's, might be a strong contender, but we'll see. Looking at it, and judging by the age of the shell, I would have thought it's probably a lighter build compared to some of those newer cars. Yes, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm having to put quite a lot of ballast in to get up to the raceway, uh, which is a, an advantage for my setup. Um, yeah, it is, it's right on the borderline of being race legal. <laughs> So into qualifying session two, starting with Dougie Gemmell in the left lane and Dan Frost in the right lane. Both cars are away cleanly, but Dan's pulling ahead now. He's a strong nine second runner, but just outside the nines this time out. Pete Cole in the white Fiat R Bath again and Phil Reeves in the XR2. Still looking for nines, don't forget. A good straight run once again. But not this time round for him. Next up is Ray Saunders on a solo. And it sounded like he bogged a bit on the line there. So no improvement as he just coasts to the top end with just one more qualifier to go. Second outing for the Tagiwa backed Civic of Kiel Priestman up against Luke Pritchard. Kiel won the front wheel drive drag series back in 2013 and has run down to an 8.7. And this looks a lot better than his last run. Yes, easily into the nines with a 9.75 at 151 miles per hour. Uh, we had a bit of a fuel issue. Yesterday, fuel rail snapped and the fuel went on the exhaust and decided to make the car catch a light. So the wife has stepped in to help things out. What's it like driving up the track then in a, an absolute standard road car? Nice and comfortable <laughs> and slow. <laughs> well, this is Pete testing on Saturday in his 10 second Renault 5. But as he said, it wasn't to be. At least he'll get some championship points by competing in that borrowed car. Final qualifying session then, and this is Dougie Gemmell from Scotland in the right lane, facing Phil Reeves in the left lane. Good pair of launches, but Dougie seems to be slowing. A storming run though from Phil. That 9.94 puts him into number two position. Luke Pritchard in the left lane. Pete Cole in the right lane. Pete under strict instructions not to break the Fiat. Looks like no real improvement here for either driver. Ray Saunders in the left lane, Keel Priestman in the right lane. 
Oh, and it looks like Ray's being held on the line. So it's a solo for Keel. He's getting back to where he wants to be, putting down another solid nine second pass. So what does it take to get quick times in a front wheel car? Well, suspension setup is one of the one of the yeah. best things that we can do because handling, letting off over the track, over the you know the runoff at the end of the track is like they they big things. Not just running on the track. And, uh, it's things that are often overlooked, isn't it? Things yeah. like that suspension and spring rates, and you wouldn't think you would need to do things like that when you're going in a straight line, but those when, things are most important. When we first built this car, we had to like we changed and everything suspension wise. Going now, it's a totally different car, isn't yeah. it? Like from what it was, bushes and stuff like that. Yeah. So. Which makes that much difference. Fundamentally, your, your drive wheels uh, uh, need grip, and uh, front wheel drive, any car when it accelerates, is transferring weight to the rear of the car. So you, you're just taking all the weight that you need away from your drive wheels as you accelerate. So it presents unique problems in itself. Um, we've got a few ideas about how to combat it and stuff like that. There's some stuff that's been tried and tested and made illegal and all kinds of stuff like that. So. Uh, it, it's a it's a constant kind of problem that hasn't really got an ideal solution to. But I mean, they are running quick with them, considering you know what what they actually have to do physically. Uh, the horsepower. I mean, they're making really good horsepower, like 1,400 horsepower. But with the weight of the cars that they are, uh, and the potential ET, if it was rear-wheel drive, would be so much faster. You know, like sixes, uh, high sixes and stuff. But it's the efficiencies that where the problems are. Uh, so yeah, if someone could figure out how to make those efficiencies uh, more obvious, then they'd be allowed to quicker. You know. So as we move into eliminations, a look at the qualifying times, and you might notice that two of last year's strongest competitors are absent this weekend. I've done a few changes over the winter time to be ready for this season. But having a wee uh, issue with my new ECU and that that I bought. I uh, just need to finish off the car really, um, unfortunately I've not made the first round, don't think I'll make the second, uh, door slammers I would like to be ready for and then enter the, the rest of the season. Uh, well yeah I was hoping to be out but the, um, quite a bit of damage the last round last year, just put everything into it to win the championship, paid off but as a consequence I've lost, lost the engine, um, so yeah slowly a bit more of it rebuilding it, just didn't have enough time to get it done for this round. So all that prep comes down to this, the first round of eliminations of the 2018 season for the class. First pair out is Ray Saunders and Dougie Gemmell. Plenty of attitude in the burnout from both our Honda Civics. On board with Dougie Gemmell here, these are our numbers four and five qualifiers, but both cars with so much potential for quicker and faster runs. Both drivers taking their time to get into stage. And it's Dougie closest to us with the better reaction time to the green light, but it's Ray pulling out ahead by mid-track. And that's where he stays, taking the win and pulling the shoots. He's through to the semis with his quickest run of the day. And on board with Dougie on that run with that big handbrake holding the car on the line. Boost problems this weekend, but as I said, so much potential in this car. Next pair, and it's Dan Frost in the Fix Autos backed Civic. He's taking on Luke Pritchard. And it's Dan who's away first. He posted a 10-0 in qualifying, so should have Luke covered. But what's this? He's off the power at the top end. Luke stays on it and goes past him to take the win. Problems for Dan, but a stout 10.76 from Luke seals the win. Phil Reeves up next in the Horsham Developments backed XR2. And Pete Cole in his stand-in Fiat. Pete away like a scalded cat in the borrowed car, but that one second reaction time from Phil, making absolutely sure he didn't pull a red light against his slower car. Pete gets some valuable points, but not surprisingly, it's Phil who takes the easy win. That 10.79, enough to get the job done. 
Last quarter is a bye run for the number one qualifier. Keel just breaking the beams, taking the green light under his own power to move into the semis. Let's hope the lack of a run doesn't mean he's damaged. We got through, corrected the map again, um, made a big difference, still got a little bit of bogging with it. Um, we brought it back, logged it, we only had 95% of throttle, so we're trying to recorrect it to get the full 100%. Other than that, the car done as it should have done. It was really more down to the, the throttle, I didn't have the full throttle there. So hopefully we'll get it sorted and we'll be back out again and do our best really. Traction compound going down for the semi-finals and fingers crossed the weather plays ball. The Team HSP Honda Civic of Luke Pritchard is taking on Phil Reeves in the insanely quick XR2. And Luke's away first, closest to us, and looks to have this one in the bag. But no problems with third gear means he's now losing ground. Phil takes full advantage and powers past him to take the win. Oh, what a race. The eagle-eyed amongst you will have seen Kiel Priestman watching the previous race featuring teammate Luke Pritchard. Kiel Civic unfortunately not able to run, so it's a solo for Ray Saunders. And Ray's not taking it easy. Every run's valuable for data, and wow, look at that. He posts his first nine second pass. That's a huge milestone achieved. Ray's team very, very happy with that one. So that sets up our final. I can't believe it, absolutely ecstatic. The track's so good, it's just bogging. So all the testing I've done isn't really relevant. Um, so I'm trying to make it work for today. It's quite exciting, but I, uh, I don't, don't want to jinx it. That's all. <laughs> well, it looks like they've beaten the weather and we're going to have a first time winner in the front wheel drive drag series here at Santa Pod. Nervous times for both our teams. Well, it's Ray Saunders with the Speed Factory Racing decals down the side of the car, taking on Phil Reeves in the Horsham Developments backed Ford. And launch problems for Ray off the line. Phil putting in a faultless run in the far lane. Ray's chasing hard, but it's Phil who takes the win, his first in the class and the first winner of the 2018 season. What a race that was here at the All Talk Test Day at Santa Pod. That's the end of round one of the UK Front Wheel Drive Drag Series. It's a winner this year. Congratulations to Philip Reeves. Thank you so much. How was your weekend so far? That's been absolutely brilliant. Yeah, it's had lots of ups and downs, but uh, essentially, yeah, it's, it's done pretty well. And in two weeks' time, we're back for the fast show. You looking to win again? Um, possibly, but definitely to compete. Uh, yeah, quite excited to it now. Yeah, quite looking forward to it. Oh. And who do you want to shout out mainly? Uh, mainly uh, my, my main sponsor, Horsham Developments, uh, for all the ECU tuning, uh, mapping and setup. Uh, been a real help. And as Luke said, round two is just two weeks away at the Fast Show. We'll look forward to seeing you back here at Santa Pod.